Next question is from module 4, 7a. What are the advantages of a digital signal over analog signal? So these are the advantages that is uh, resistance to noise and uh, interference. Digital signals are less susceptible uh, to getting corrupted by electrical noise or uh, any other uh, noise uh, such as power lines and radio waves. Next is accuracy and clarity. It provides more accurate and uh, uh, more clarity from the analog signal and efficiency of uh, transmission and storage. Uh, digital signals can be compressed effi effectively and reduce amount of data needed to transmit uh, of storage. Next, uh, long distance transmission. Uh, digital signal can be regenerated at uh, regular interval during the transmission overcoming signal weakening over long distance next is security uh, digital signal information can be easily encrypted adding uh, an extra layer of security for sensitive data transmission next versatility this signal can be uh, represent various kind of information including audio video text next is uh, signal processing digital signal can be easily manipulated and uh, processed using digital signal processing and the last one is cost efficient digital signals circuits uh, uh, for processing and storing digital signals are generally cheaper than the analog circuits next question is state sampling theorem express sampling with the need sketch and equation what are the challenges faced with the request criteria and develop a program to display signal of uh, its spectrum so this is the condition for uh, sampling theorem that is fs that is sampling frequency sh should be greater or equal to 2 fm that is uh, uh, frequency of a message signal and this is the proof uh, and these are the waveforms And this is the waveform for power sampling. That is, FS frequency is uh, more than more than two FM. And it, this is perfect sampling. FS is equal to two FM. And this is uh, under sampling. FS is uh, less than two FM. Next question is explain the generation of generation and detection of PPM waves with the neat block diagram this is the explanation and uh, here is a block diagram this is comparator uh, the modulated signal is uh, given to positive uh, positive side of uh, comparator and negative is co connected to sawtooth uh, generation and this uh, comparator will compare uh, if the Message signal is greater than carrier signal, it produces positive voltage and if it is less than carrier signal, it will produce negative voltage and it is given to the uh, clamping uh, circuit and it will produce a PWM that is a pulse width modulation uh, signals and this is given to mono stable, it will produce uh, PPM signal. So this is the waveform here. You can see sort of the wave is there and uh, and this this one is uh, modulating signal if error signal is uh, more than more than message signal it will produce a negative wave that is here zero and if if uh, message signal is greater it will uh, produce modulation it will produce a positive 
that is here is a one and from that every falling edge of the pwm signal we will get a ppm signal and this is for uh, generation of ppm signal and this is the explanation and this is the uh, detection of a ppm signal here ppm pulse is given to pulse generation and reference pulse generation uh, since ppm signal traveled uh, uh, for a long range it is corrupted and pulse generation will produce a clean ppm pulse and given to rs uh, flip flop and if the input is coming from r then it is uh, rs flip flop will reset and it is if it is come from re reference pulse generator then it will uh, flip flop will set uh, and produce pwm signal and pwm remodulator will uh, remodulate the signal and uh, uh, give the output of uh, message signal and this is the waveform for that this is the next question what is the uh, aperture effect in pm system how can it be minimized so aperture effect in uh, pm is distortion caused by the use of a pm to transmit an analog signal and it is minimized by anti-aliasing filter can be used to remove the high frequency component of signal before sampling and next question is what is multiplexing and why it is required in communication explain the working of tdm with a neat diagram so tdm is time division multiplexing it is a process of uh, transmitting and receiving independent signals over a common channel by means of a synchronized switch and uh, this is the advantage of uh, TDM more than one signal can be sent easily with uh, single medium and effective use of uh, bandwidth of medium it can be increased amount of transmitter information and uh, as you can see here n number of message signals are there and it is given to the low pass filter to remove the high frequency from the message signal this low pass filter is also called as pre-aliasing pre filter and this is transmitted to commutator and commutator have certain functions that is uh, it take samples of each n uh, input at the rate of fs is greater than or equal to 2 omega and it has se sequentially multiplex these n sample with the sampling interval of s is equal to 1 by fs and after commutator it will uh, pass the signal to pulse amplitude modulator and it will pass to uh, on common channel from that uh, pulse amplitude demodulator will receive the signal and this whole process is called uh, synchronization and here uh, decommutator will uh, reverse the process of uh, commutator and it, it will divide and uh, provide to the uh, low pass filter this low pass filter is called as uh, reconstruction filters and from that we will get the message signal and this is the explanation for that this much is not enough this much is till here and after that uh, after that it will give to low pass filter and from that we will get the message signal if you write this much it is enough Next question is 9A from uh, module 5. Uh, define ISI outline baseband binary data transmission system with the neat diagram and equations. So, this is the explanation for uh, definition for uh, ISI and baseband binary data transmission system 
mainly consist of uh, four components that is data source uh, it will uh, generate the binary data stream and pulse shopper this will convert binary data into pulse of, uh, for transmission and a channel this is a medium where all channels all uh, signals are travel and introducing noise and uh, distortion next is a receiver filter this filter will uh, receive the signal and reduce the noise and isi and this is the equation for uh, uh, transmitted signal next question is uh, develop a code for generation of uh, i diagram and this is the code for i diagram next question is illustrate the concept of uh, noise in cascading stages uh, with a diagram write ferris formula and mention its terms so this is the explanation noise has its uh, greater effect at the uh, input to, to a receiver uh, simply because in this point uh, which is a uh, signal is a very uh, level, sig signal level is very low and uh, next is noise performance of receiver invariably determined in the very first uh, stage of the receiver usually rf amplifier or mixer and design of these uh, circuits must ensure the uh, use of uh, very low noise component taking consideration of uh, current resistor and bandwidth beyond first and second stages uh, noise is basically no longer a problem and uh, here is a formula for finding uh, nr that is uh, nr, nr is equal to nr1 plus nr2 minus 1 by a1 plus nr3 minus 1 a1 into a2 and so on here nr is noise ratio and nr1 is noise ratio uh, of a second first amplifier and nr2 is for second amplifier and so on and a1 is power gain of first amplifier and a2 is power gain of second amplifier and so on and this is the uh, block diagram for uh, cascading stages here voltage and one resistor is there and nf1 nf2 nf3 till nf1 and v out is there next question is 10a explain the following concept briefly uh, that is Nyquist criterion for distortionless transmission and this is the explanation for that you can refer by pausing the video and the next sub question is baseband MRA PM transmission And next question is develop a code to generate NRZ and RZ pulse and this is the code for NRZ and RZ pulse next define signal to noise ratio and the difference between external and difference type of external and internal noise and uh, this is the definition for signal to noise ratio it is basically defined as um, ratio of a power of signal to power of background noise so here snr is uh, power of a signal divided by power of noise in dp and this is snr is equal to uh, 10 log to the base 10 and power of signal by power of noise this is the formula for that and 
in the noise mainly two types are there that is the external and internal noise and here is the in external noise many types are there that is atmospheric noise uh, that is caused by nature source uh, such as lightning and uh, electrical disturbance in the atmosphere and next is uh, man-made noise that is generated in uh, human activities uh, like machinery motors vehicle and other electronic gadgets it is solar noise uh, emitted from the sun especially during the solar flames and uh, solar other solar activities next is cosmic uh, noise that is uh, originated from stars and other celestial bodies next is uh, internal noise in that thermal noise uh, caused by random motion of electrons in conductors resulting from thermal agitation uh, presence in all uh, electronic device and uh, proportional to temperature if the temperature is high then uh, thermal noise will be high and next is uh, short noise occurrence due to decrease nature of uh, electric charge power of spectrum is i by hz is equal to 2q i next flicker noise uh, this is uh, characterized by its uh, frequency spectrum which is inversely proportional to the frequency and burst noise that is uh, consist of sudden step like uh, uh, transmission between two and more levels so this is the end of uh, model paper one and uh, model paper two solution we will uh, provide in next video and subscribe for uh, such uh, more videos thank you for watching